Mom, is it fire blood again? Did you find it or you chucked it in the bin? I am not ruined. I am ruination. A legend spotted. <laughs> I hope you're doing alright. So today's video is going to be the Ruin and Rising book review and I'll be spilling my opinions on certain elements and certain perspectives of the book and today's video is going to be a little bit more special than the ones that I have filmed before, the Grishawa's Guide ones because this video we'll be talking about, we'll be comparing the TV show versus the book and certain elements that I liked in the TV show or in the book. So let's get into it. Ruin and Rising, the grand, the epic. The monumental, the heroic grand finale of the Grishaverse trilogy, but trust me, it wasn't all that I explained before. So, throughout the middle of the book, I found it a little bit annoying that Alina was fighting between her powers and she's like, Oh my god, I'm so powerful, what if I become so too powerful? And then, Oh my god, I'm powerless, I'm basically not the sun summoner. And then she's like dividing herself, her characteristics into two different things that Alina and the other one is sun summoner, but she doesn't realize that all her experiences that she's been through, both Alina and the sun summoner are part of her characteristics so i found that a little bit annoying how alina doesn't come to realize that after all the experiences she's been through and i recall one scene that i annotated like it was one of my favorite scenes i was like taken aback i was like shook and it was alina discovers that if they are in the lake and alina discovers that mar has tattooed something called the i am become a blade and i was like so shocked i mean it summarizes his experience from siege and storm and the first book it says how he has been from a popular person how he used to fit in everything but then now he's just like jealous of alina alina is getting all the attention so if i were him i would have felt jealous so i don't get how all the people are like hating on mal they don't like his characteristics but definitely he has gone through some of the character character development that i expected so the beginning starts with our Sol Koroleva who ends up in a tunnel after the fight that happened after what she encountered with the Darkling at the chapel and in case if we don't know what really happened with uh, the end of Season Storm you can always feel free to check out the link in the description below that leads to the Season Storm review of the Grishavas guide thingy that I have done in my previous vlogs so as I was saying she ends up in a tunnel and now she is like frail, powerless and indolent and she is basically Alina so meanwhile she is struggling with her power saying that she is powerless and she has to find the firebird the rest of the grisha friends are like okay let's not waste our time here we need to do something important we need as much as help as you can get against the darkling we need to train our soldiers and they go on um training and alina is like gathering her gathering her little group and then she say like all right we need to get it together you guys we need to be serious we need to find the firebird but before we do all that we need to find nikolai importantly because um we don't know what he where he ended up after that what happened at the chapel and he's our most important ally so we need to find him so he can provide technical support and everything to reach the firebird and then everyone's like yeah good idea and then mal is like no we can't risk like 12 grisha we need uh, we can't risk like 12 grisha that's too much we need as less as we can and then alina's like okay all right let me go choose a group uh, let's see who we have here Ah, right, we've got Mal, our best tracker, and then we've got, um, yeah, Zoya. And then we've got Genya, and then um, Tholia and Tamar, yeah, our intelligent allies. And then Nadia, yeah, the powerful, the beautiful Nadia. And then Nadia's younger brother, Adrik. So, yeah, that's that's about it, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, and then David, yeah, he's a fabricator. That's about right, so we can gather a little group. And then Tama suggests that she says that Sturmhound had smuggling lines across Raibo, so that would be the best area to lead us searching lines across for Nikolai. So basically, he can like back up with certain Sturmhound's smuggling lines. 
and everyone is like yeah all right so we can she uh, we can search for rivals that's actually a very good suggestion and alina agrees and after that they all leave the room and then alina feels this like tether that she has been hiding from her friends for a long time um she feels this pull between her power and someone else's and she's afraid that's the darkling basically light and shadow are two different things but somehow they're connected together they are the essence of life and so they're connected together and then alina feels this pull between her and the darkling's power and then she just like kind of lets the power open to see what it really is because she's curious and then you know what happens next she's surrounded in a dark room there's this dark there's this person sitting in a dark throne in a dark robe and then there's someone else who's basically a healer who's healing the cash at his arm and yes yeah, so who it is yeah that was so unexpected right that's the darkling yay so then the darkling threatens alina saying that he will destroy drafka and she has no chance but to ally up with him and then alina is like no and then alina is like not agreeing with the darkling because they basically hate each other and then she gets out of that um that hologram projectile thingy and after that she talks to mal about her mersost which is basically like power but you do not quite have the hang of it like the power that comes naturally to some person that we have to that is like really rare among the grisha and then she tells mal that how her connection between the darkling and his powers is leading her to actually summon some amount of the darkling's power and she's afraid that the darkling ha also has access to some of her light summoning powers so she, after she tells all that and then the drama is over and then a little rigged experiment goes on and mal such this and alina is not aware of it but in the end she comes to know the plans and then mal basically like um leads this um like explosion a little explosion that causes them to be excused from the uh, apparatus because alina is not quite um trusting apparatus with her plans and everything so they basically want to escape the apparatus so after that little explosion happen happens they basically get free of the apparatus and they go on journey throughout the journey they find difficulties and they go through a lot of experiences to reach the to reach rivals their destination and then um alina's like kind of struggling with her judgments she's like judging people she's having a lot of her thoughts are being clouded by feelings and she's thinking that what have what risk have we led our friends have i led my friends and then she's thinking about um being two separate characteristics that if she was powerless she if she would be nothing she would be just basically that often and she doesn't care about other others feeling that she is important so i kind of find, found that annoying but it was realistic to read and alina is basically going through a lot in that middle part and after that they somehow find nikolai and then he uh, comes up with a plan that includes his recent prototype of the ship called vehader that was in the siege and storm and it's called the pelican and he's telling about the plans of uh, finding the firebird using the ship and then he's telling alina to choose a crew so that they can all go and find the firebird so that happens and meanwhile alina is like enjoying uh, the some parts of her not drastic life she is parting away and then she is um getting more time to spend with her friends and she is basically like embracing her friends as a found family which i really like and it's this is a trope that's basically found a lot in the grisha verse series so i really really love that and then after all this is going she plans to visit her friends and then she found uh, finds out that the darkling has actually evaded has plans to evade westrafka and he has destroyed keramzin and then alina is like oh no oh my god this is not going to happen why did you destroy the uh, why did you destroy keramzin she basically lets that tether out once again and then she sees the darkling and then she's like why did you destroy keramzin this is my hometown did you destroy anakuya too and then he's like yes if you do not surrender at a certain point he gives a certain point and time and he tells alina to surrender otherwise she will face all the orphans at the keramzin those children they are held they are being held hostage by the darkling and if she does not surrender otherwise the children would have to die so that what that's what happens 
Alina somehow finds the third amplifier, which is the Firebird. But then, made a spoilers ahead. I wouldn't say the made a spoilers now, or it would be a spoilery video. So after she finds out the third amplifier, Mal has to die with the war in the Darkling. They find the Darkling and all the plans. She basically has this idea that David and Genya told them that they had to execute. And then after she executes the idea, the Darkling is being killed. And honestly, I felt a little bit sad on the part where Darkling is killed because he was a nice addition to the plot and nice addition to the entire series and I would have liked to see the Darkling more in the Rune and Dry scene. He was, would have basically length, uh, made this plot more lengthier but it would have been worth the ride. And after that, all that drama happens, Mal is gonna die and then surprisingly, surprise surprise, he comes back to life because this plot would have no made so no sense whatsoever without Mal. And then at last, Mal and Alina escape to a countryside and live a serene and peaceful life while Nikolai becomes the king. And Nikolai has this encounter with the Darkling that basically makes him the king of scars and leads to another duology of his own. And I may be able to pick up the book sometime if I liked it. So that's basically of all the plot summary in here i liked i loved the spoilers the plot twist that i expected from siege and storm it was there in ruin and rising but i felt like this wasn't um much of a thrill ride that i expected i thought thousands of people would be there to experience the event and thousands of people will be massacred but uh, it's ya you can't expect expect much the TV show versus the books. I honestly enjoyed the TV show. And then in the beginning, there's this little intro that gives me goosebumps every time I watch it. And one main reason why I love the TV show is that the portrayal of Asian characters and how it is important to especially Asian readers. Not a lot of fantasy TV shows portray Asian characters as the lead characters and especially Shadow and Bone let an Asian actor become the lead character and that that was like really amazing and really thoughtful so i loved that trope of letting asian characters portray major characters and then there's also inage alina etc etc and lee Bardugo did an awesome job of character work of the asian portrayal of characters in the books both six of crows and the shadow and bone trilogy which i really really loved and it really appealed to me so i loved how that impacted my reading and watching experience so next the final part is characters and i really liked enjoyed the characters and especially the comeback of nikolai so if we start with alina and i feel like alina's thoughts her being clouded by her feelings and her emotions for her friends and then she's always afraid of what's gonna happen next and what's in the future especially because it's a war with the darkling and he's very powerful so i would have been nervous like alina if i was there too and alina has gone through a lot of character development and struggles through the entire trilogy and I really admire what a beautiful character she has been molded into. Next, Genya. Genya has gone through a lot of things and I like how resilient she is and then especially with her encounter of deposing the king and queen of Ravka against the Darkling and how she is being framed as like a simple servant and nothing more but she does have a lot more capacity and potential than that and she does realize it and I really love and congratulate Ali uh, Genya on that. Next, Nikolai. So Nikolai has this little encounter that changes his entire life and the perspective of the other people uh, portraying him as the king. He becomes the king of scars after that encounter with the Darkling. He is changed like Genya, how she, Genya was changed in the Siege and Storm but in an entirely different way and if I did say what it was, it would bring spoilers. So after that happens, Nikolai is like, no, I'm not worthy of being king. But then he has to learn uh, to recover from those scars, which gets him a new duology that's the King of Scars duology. And I would have really liked, and I would have really, I'm really hoping for reading the King of Scars duology, and I might actually end up reading it one day. Then the Darkling. 
Darkling. I hated the Darkling, the previous two books, but now it's like the Darkling. I would have liked the Darkling to appear more in the book because he would have obviously made the plot more interesting and he would have been obviously a nice addition. And if there was something epic that the Darkling was to do, that would have just made me just grasp onto every single page and i just missed that in this book then mal mal was definitely that tattoo thingy i am become a blade that was like really shocking and a life-changing experience for mal i guess after what has how what he has been through in both the other books the rest of the grisha trilogy i feel really bad for him first he becomes like a popular person who fits in everything and then he's like the most popular um and he's like the quite the admirable character and then alina who is basically like a dog becomes the sun summoner and she becomes the center of attention and if it were me i would have felt jealous of alina of my best friend too so i feel bad for the guy and all the hate he receives uh, but i did not like like mal in that way it was a fairly good character and if it wasn't for mal the third amplify concept would have made no sense whatsoever so i really liked that so overall i would give this book a honest four stars i would have liked to give it 3.5 stars basically because it was a drastic book i did not like to be separated from the family i found in the grisha verse trilogy the characters and the plot the world of the grisha it was really hard for me to like it was just like the experience that i read it yesterday i began reading the series yesterday and now it has suddenly ended so it was um really a very good experience for me so i would have overall give this entire trilogy a four stars it's coming from my heart and then the ruin and rising was just like ruined my feelings for the shadow and bone trilogy so that's the video so the entire experience and all the found family that i found in the grishavas trilogy was just the character work and everything just made it so realistic and then it's chef's kiss so the next video i am going to be doing the six of cross trilogy i'm super excited for it i just read the first 10 pages and i was like oh my god wow i love these characters i love this world i'm just going to go deeper into it and in my next video i will be reviewing the six of cross trilogy so stay tuned for that so keep reading stay tuned stay happy stay positive and subscribe